What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can test drive Linux using just a USB drive. So first things first, we are going to grab our two USB drives. We are going to have one as our installation media and our other as the installation. I'm using this one that is a 64 gig USB 3.0 because it, not only does it look nice, but this is also a more rugged USB stick by Gorilla. Uh, personally, one of my favorite tote arounds, and it is perfect for the Linux distribution that we're gonna be using because it's got green on it. Today, we're gonna be using Linux Mint, and it is personally one of my favorites, and it's also one of the easiest to get into. So let's get started by plugging our two USB drives right on in. A little technical difficulty. I don't even know if this can be declared as uh, technical. This is physical difficulty. There we go. A little bit of a tight fit, but we got them both in our USB ports. All right. And now we're going to go into my desktop. And now that we are in my desktop, we got our two USB drives. We have the red USB drive, which is USB-E. Or no, this is the, uh, I don't remember. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as we have the correct drive at the end. So I think I labeled the red one as our new volume and USB drive E I think is our green one, our Gorilla drive. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple things first. So first, we are going to need Rufus, if you're using Windows, which chances are you're going to be. All right, and then we are going to download this part right here. This is going to be our software that we're going to be using to actually install the installation ISO to our installation drive. Now, don't let it get too confusing because it's actually a lot simpler than it sounds. And the next thing, of course, we are going to need our Linux distribution, which we are going to be using Linux Mint, one of my personal favorites. And we're gonna go ahead and download this. I am using the Cinnamon Edition. And when you're downloading it, you're going to want to use one of the mirrors because they don't host it themselves on the site. You're actually going to have to download it from a different mirror. So I just use any of them. I'd, I think Advanced Hosters is the fastest, but it doesn't really matter. So now we're gonna let that download, and once that is all downloaded, we are gonna go ahead and we are going to flash that to our USB installation disk. Okay, now that our Linux Mint ISO file is downloaded, we're gonna to go to our download location. We can close out our browser, not open a new tab. So I'm gonna to go to downloads, and I'm gonna open Rufus. So that is going to start, that is going to ask you if you want to launch it. You just click yes. And our 16 gigabyte new volume here, which is our red USB, that is going to be our device we are flashing to. So the boot selection area is going, you're going to leave this as it is with disk or ISO image. Then you're gonna to go to select. Since it's in my downloads folder, I'm going to select it right here and just open. I'm going to leave everything default and we're going to hit start. And it's going to write in ISO image mode, which is recommended. I'm not sure the difference between the two and it, I really don't know enough to say the difference between the two. So just hit okay. All I know is this works. It is going to erase all the data on that flash drive. So if there's anything important on there, go ahead and back it up now. So we're going to hit okay. And that is going to go ahead and make our boot disk. So it opens up a folder here where you can actually watch your files being extracted from the ISO image very slowly, but it does it. And once that is all complete, we'll be able to boot into it. And I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, now that we're finally done, we are going to go ahead and we're gonna go back into camera mode. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and shut our system down. That way we could select our media in the BIOS. So I have a custom-built gaming PC. 
So it is actually pretty straightforward, but you may need to look into it if you have a pre-built system or a laptop. So most of the time you can get away, get away with either F2 or delete. And in some cases, you can get to an actual boot menu using F12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and mash the delete key until I get into my BIOS. And this ring light that I have is very bright. Probably not a good idea for a screen. So with that USB drive, we have created a bootable disk. So we are going to go to our boot section. And right now by default is going to be your Windows boot manager. And no matter what system you're using, here, let me turn this light off. No matter what system you're going to be using, there will be a boot option. Unless you're using a company laptop like I do, where you're completely locked out from actually accessing your boot menu, you can actually go into most consumer machines and select the boot option. The only ones that I've noticed that aren't really able to do that are Dell machines, but I'm not too positive on that. I have very little experience with Dell machines and they're not good ones. So we're gonna select our USB and we are going to save. And we are also going to restart. Let's get this set up on the stand here. All right, what you probably saw there was the boot options for this USB drive. Uh, by default, if you let it sit, it will automatically boot into the test configuration, which you can also install from. So we're on our Mint desktop. So right now we're, we're basically running Linux, but this is just a test image. This isn't a permanent installation, so you can't really install stuff on here and have it permanent. And to make this image permanent, we're gonna have to install Linux Mint, which you're gonna click on this disk, select your language, continue, select your dialect, Continue. And this is optional, but I like to do it just in case. Um, it's supposed to be like a compatibility download for uh, media. It's to install multimedia codecs, and it says here that the multimedia codecs are required to play some video formats and properly render some websites. So just to be safe, oh, I didn't check it. Never mind. You can do that later on, I'm pretty sure. And the best way to do this is we are going to erase a disk and install Linux Mint. We're going to go to the not advanced features. We're going to go continue. And since this is my Windows installation and I got it very dialed in, I'm not going to delete that. <laughs> so this is my USB drive here. I could tell by the 64.2 gigabytes SMI USB disk. I'm going to go ahead and select that and install now. And it's going to ask you if you want to write changes to this disk. You're going to continue. It'll delete everything on the disk. And then while it's installing, you're going to go ahead and select your region. I am in New York. I'm going to call this Arch after my channel. And this is going to be Arch USB. Go ahead and give it a basic password to make it secure and require login. Leave that default. And we're going to go ahead and just let that install. Probably didn't see any of that. All right, now after an agonizingly long wait, we are ready to finally restart. All right, so what you're gonna do is go ahead and click restart now. And then when that is ready and set, it's going to say, please remove the installation medium and press enter. So since I have this on a little USB hub, I'm gonna go ahead and disable that and then press enter. But since I have multiple different boot instances, 
I'm gonna go ahead and select my USB drive. And just like that, we now have a bootable USB drive that is on Linux. Go ahead and log in here so that way we can start our first time configuration stuff. And I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to set up Linux to use for gaming. I'll do that in a separate video, which I will link at the end of this video and also in the description once I get to it. But now we have our Linux environment open. We got our little panel here. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through our startup dialog. There's a lot of stuff going on right now and it's really overwhelming that USB drive. That's the thing that you have to keep in mind is that this is a USB drive, not a SSD or even a spinning hard disk. So a lot of things are going on at once, especially storage related stuff is going to cause slowdowns. But it's good to just get your foot in the door and get comfortable with it before you decide to, let's say, switch over permanently or use it as a dedicated machine for something. I personally use Mint as my server because it is real easy to use and gives you that granularity that you need when it comes to server related stuff. Alright guys, since this is not a tutorial on how to use Linux, we are all set. That is all you need to know to be able to set up Linux Mint or any Linux distribution really on a USB drive. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more videos like this one, go ahead and give it a subscribe. That is going to help out quite a lot. I plan on putting out a lot more Linux-based content in the future, and I also plan on touching a lot more aspects of technology. And if you also like gaming, I'm also going to be doing some gaming on the side as well. Well, guys, my name is Arch, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.